they leave Korea, what do they need to do? Go to the Nori one. What else? Club. Club? What <laughs> club? You're not Korean. I'm asking the Korean students. perspective you think the clubs in Hongdae are great? Yeah. Mm. EY University is in Hongdae, all women's university, right? <laughs> <laughs> in that area. Have you been to the club? No? Then you can take them to the club sometime, right? In Hongdae. How do you get back? It's quite far away. Stay and get the metro back in the morning. Yeah. Dance all night. What time does the club close at? Uh, two, two o'clock. Two o'clock. And then what do you do for the rest of the night? Uh, <laughs> uh, personal, right? Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> go, go to the some late night restaurant, right? They have restaurants which are open. For the club. Late, late, late night or later club. Or some people stay in the ginger bar. Do Korean people do that? Yes. Some foreigners I know they stay in the ginger bar. Ginger bar. What is a ginger bar? Can you explain? What is that? What is it? Like a Korean sauna. Have you been to the Korean sauna? Yes. Sauna. No. Then that's number two. Another thing you need to do before you leave Korea: go to the nori bar, go to the ginger bar. <laughs> right, go to the hall. Hmm? Sauna place. Yes. Yeah. It's quite nice in Korea, they have some baths. Not very much baths and uh, sauna and those kinds of things. Right? You pay some 6,000 won or 8,000 won. Do you go there? You meet your family? Sometimes, yes. Okay, anything else, Korean students? Anything else they need to do? Come on, foreigners are telling you. <laughs> I said the nori bomb, he said the club, I said the ginger bomb. <laughs> what about you guys? If you drink hmm? with Korean older people, hmm? uh, you're less. Uh, if you eating, hmm. and no one alcohol, no more alcohol. What do you mean? Uh, Cup, one of cup, mm -hmm. and some other people mm, pour the drink. Okay, mm -hmm. and you eating drink. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm, mm -hmm. later glass, mm -hmm. uh, no soju. Uh, it has to be empty. Okay. Yeah, has to so be. they say bottoms up, like bottoms up. You have to finish yes. the drink in one go. Yeah, no. yeah. So you mean just going drinking with Korean people? Yes. And, <laughs> doing and bottom up thing. It, it is very useful yeah. way business Korea. Mm -hmm. Does gambe in mm -hmm. Korea means you have to finish the drink? Yes. So you have to, you can't leave in your glass. It's rude if you leave in your glass. Right? Yes. Is that a cultural elective or cultural imperative? If foreigners don't do that, is it okay? Or mm -hmm. foreigners have to do that? Elective? If foreigners don't do that, is it okay? Okay, so you need to go drinking with Koreans. You need to go to, you can do it all together in one night, right? Go to the ginger bar first, you get dehydrated, you'll get done very quickly, right? Then you can go to the uh, drinking with the Korean people, go to the nori bar, and finally you can go to the club. All in one night you can get four traditional experiences, right? So did you say you're organizing some, organizing some student events or that kind of thing? Hmm? What's your title? Hmm? What is your title? Director of events. So you can organize a one night event for the foreign students in international marketing. <laughs> Special event for foreign students in international marketing. What do you think? Hmm? They can do all those things and could you, could you organize that? We discussed about it. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> yeah. yes, maybe, maybe. But I can't drink alcohol, I'm too old. <laughs> no. What? You're younger than 
Professor Chapman. Professor Chapman can help us change. I heard about that. Our first one, Professor Chapman, to our Chuzang. Our three o'clock. Oh, he's going there? Ah, yes. Every year, the, sometimes the, they go to the festival just to give some money to the students. Why is you not go? Maybe I will. Without the progress. Yeah, maybe I will. <laughs> <laughs> I have class now, so they're going at 3 o'clock, right? Well, I have class at this time. So maybe I'll go another time. But they just go just for a short time. Yeah. Usually in Ireland, the teacher can't go drinking with the students. And then after they graduate, it's okay. But before they graduate, then maybe we go drinking together. Yay, hey, A plus! Right, drinking buddy. So no A plus for her, she didn't go drinking with me. Right? So, teachers are not allowed to do that kind of thing, right? With the students. So just I suggest that you organize some event for, for the foreign students, right? What kind of events have you organized so far? Oh, yeah. uh, okay. We are going to cook some foreigners. Cook foreigners? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> some foreigners will cook. Oh, some foreigners are going to cook their national dish. Did you ask those foreigners? Yeah, to her. Did you ask them? Uh, she does. Uh. Oh, we are not cooking because uh, there's no, there are no ingredients for Danish food or Slovak or Czech food. Okay, what about Danish pastry? You can go to Paris and get and buy a Danish pastry. Uh, for 20,000, we can buy maybe two breads. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you guys going to cook? No, but our friends are going to cook. Uh, okay, so pancakes, fresh okay. pancakes. That sounds interesting. What about the dancing shop or something like that? <laughs> Some Russian traditional dancing and <laughs> <laughs> Slovakian traditional dancing and singing. No. Hmm? No. <laughs> Could organize that kind of event. What do you think? I'm not good at dancing. I'm saying you're good at dancing. Also, when I was a kid, I did some Russian traditional dancing in my school. They had to play. And you have to fold your arms and kick out your legs. Can you show? <laughs> Can you show us? I don't know what you mean. Ah, yes. Okay. <laughs> you have to go very low, but I'm not flexible now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very low and then kick out your legs. It looks quite funny, right? Can you do that kind of dancing? <laughs> What is it, what's the name for that dancing? I don't know. Russian traditional, maybe. Mm -hmm. Can you do ballet? Mm -hmm. In Russia they have some ballet shows, right? Yeah. Okay. So then let's uh, look at the case study. Yeah. So, just perhaps you read the case study, the first sentence in each paragraph, but just today, we'll just do it quickly, so I'll just write the main points on the board. So the last time, we talked about the uh, problem, which is that Mayo Clinic wants to increase their international patients by 100%, and we need to do some market research to support, support this. Okay, so better to write down as go along, so you should have the problem written down somewhere. So, we summed up their market research, but now we're going to talk about a little bit more detail. So, global market research. So I'll, if you don't have the paper, you'll just, you can just look up here. So first of all, they have uh, patient satisfaction studies. So they asked their patients who came to their hospital 
Were you happy with our service? So they need to uh, think about the quality of the data. In this case, they need to think about quality. They need to think about the international communication infrastructure. address into the computer system, they have, their computer system might not accept the address of the foreign, uh, foreign people. It may not be the same system. Uh, the international communication infrastructure, so the phone or by mail, they have to send, the mail could get lost. Some countries, postal service is not very good. The telephone might not be working, that kind of thing. So, in some countries, they spend a lot of time outside of their home, so they won't answer the phone if we call them. Uh, in, when I lived in Italy, they spend a lot more time outside than in Ireland. It's raining a lot in Ireland, right? They're always outside. Uh, sometimes you... If they're wealthy, they went to the Mayo Clinic, they, have, they don't answer the phone. Their, their servant or employee answers the phone in their house, so we can't talk to them. This is kind of a cultural problem. <coughs> but anyway, this is an important thing for Mayo Clinic to do, kind of international research. So they found out the results by doing this, that... Uh, the listening, explaining, and thoroughness is their strength of their clinic. So they do this kind of research, talk to the patients later, call them or send them a post. They found out that these are the strength of their doctors, of their hospital. Do you understand thoroughness? What does that mean? Hmm? Thorough. Hmm? If you are a thorough person, what does it mean? No? Thorough means you do everything 100% without making any mistakes. That is... In the, again, in the real life, when you start working, that is very important. Okay? It means you don't make any spelling mistakes. You don't make any little errors. Right? You're very thorough. So if you work in a company, they look for students who are very thorough. You can put that on your CV or have good uh, attention to detail. Don't make mistakes. If you make some small spelling mistake, even in your CV, the employee will just throw in the bin, the employer will just throw in the bin, right? You're not a thorough person. So, uh, <clears throat> they also found out that, why did they choose Mayo Clinic? They found out that there is the power of the word of mouth, currently. So, they were told by their friends or their family, their relatives, that the Mayo Clinic did a very good job. So that's why they chose Mayo Clinic. <clears throat> so in this figure, we can see that this is a graph showing how did you hear about the Mayo Clinic? So they asked that kind of question, right? How did you hear about the Mayo Clinic? We can see that uh, friend or relative is over 60%, 65%. The next biggest one is the doctor. Their doctor gave them some word of mouth reference. And then down here we have TV or internet, just less than 10%. Okay? So, 
By doing this kind of research, it helps them to know what is uh, at the current situation. Then they have the next thing that they're uh, thinking about is the international healthcare insurance market. Do you have health insurance? Is it international health insurance? Probably not, right? Unless you're quite well, very wealthy. So if you have international insurance, it means that something happens to you, you can go to the US for treatment. Okay. So you might not need that, you might think just Korea is okay, but some wealthy people might say, no, the treatment in the Mayo Clinic is the best in the world, best in the US, so if I get some problem, I want to go there. Serious problem, right? So, this is an opportunity for the Mayo Clinic. If people have insurance, international health insurance, then more people will use a Mayo Clinic. So, they think this could be a major way, opportunity to expand by, make, by seeing that the uh, health insurance can uh, go out. So, they did some research of the health insurance policy holders. So, the patient satisfaction study was the first one. The second one is going to be the, these policy holders. Do you understand policy? <coughs> so, they did some research of people who already have international health insurance. So they did face-to-face uh, -face interviews, 400 face-to-face -face interviews. <clears throat> um, this tells them the preferences. They mainly want to know the preferences. What do they want? Why did they choose this uh, healthcare? They found that for a high cost and life threatening, do you understand the life threatening? Uh, high cost life threatening uh, procedures was one of the main reasons that they want. So obviously, if you don't, if you break your leg, you're not going to go to the Mayo Clinic, right? The, the one in Gangnam is okay. But for the high cost life threatening, like cancer maybe, that kind of problem, okay? Brain, some brain tumor, those kind of problems. They, add, they also checked about the brand awareness of Mayo Clinic. So did they choose this policy because of Mayo Clinic? And they found out that, uh, no, only 25% uh, even knew about the Mayo Clinic. And it wasn't their main reason for choosing to get international health insurance. Then they had a, another study which was a telephone interview. They had 323 telephone interviews. Uh, the same thing with these policy holders. And they found here that just less than 10% thought that Mayo Clinic was a benefit on this Mayo Clinic was a benefit. So they didn't know Mayo Clinic or they didn't think it was a big benefit on their policy. So, 
even though there is a high number, growing number of people who have the international health insurance, it doesn't mean that they're going to use the Mayo Clinic because not many people know about the Mayo Clinic and not many people think it's, be it's a big benefit to have the Mayo Clinic. So they found this out by doing this research. So they, they think they need to do further research to expand their understanding about this area. And it also made them more cautious about the insurance industry. First of all, they thought that this was a great opportunity for them. But after doing the research, they are a little bit more cautious about this one, spending a lot of resources on trying to develop, have more people having international health insurance. Okay. So, this is the information, and we have the problem, right? So now is the information part. Write down what you think is the important information here that's going to help you to make your decision. Okay. So we have the problem. This is the information, the market research that Mayo Clinic is already doing. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is their global market research. So if you have written down the uh, information, then you can start to make, think about, discuss with your partner what is going to be your analysis or your action plan for the Mayo Clinic. Okay? Try to discuss with your partner and write down some action plan. So what, 
what are what are you going to suggest to the Mayo Clinic? What marketing research should they do to help them to now to help them to learn what they need to know so they can expand their business? They stand out that mostly when you have a life threatening procedure or high cost procedure. So wealthy people go there, right? It's like private hospital, but very prestigious hospital. But we saw on the website it was the best hospital in the USA last year, right? <clears throat> if it's the best hospital in the USA, it might be one of the best hospitals in the world, if not the best hospital in the world, right? So if if you get sick later, do you want to go to the best hospital and get the best treatment? Especially if you have a life-threatening problem. You do? Then that's why people choose to go there. Did we see the hospital last or last class? Yes, we saw the web page of the home site. Home <laughs> web page of the hospital, yes. Just the home page. I said to you that if you have some problem, it's useful. I checked the Mayo Clinic. They have, if you go to their home page and put in your problem, you can find out more information about your problem. But you're young and probably don't have any problems. The cost is very expensive, right? The cost is very expensive. Yes, that's why people buy insurance. Right? So you could, if you're a rich African president who has a lot of cash from selling diamonds, then there's no problem by just paying cash. But most people will get insurance. Yes? They want they want more customers. They originally thought that one way, best way could be that these days people are getting more international health insurance. So they got a bit excited about that. They thought more people get international health insurance than we'll get a lot more customers. But then they found that the people who are getting the international health insurance, they, they're not choosing this because 
of Mayo Clinic, right? Only 25% know about the Mayo Clinic, and only 10% of them think it's a benefit to have Mayo Clinic in this policy. So it's not well known outside of America or outside of the circle of people who know about that by word of mouth. So even though people have international health insurance, it doesn't mean they'll choose the Mayo Clinic. Maybe they'll choose another hospital in the US or another hospital in Germany or another country. Of the people who buy international health insurance, yes, on 75% of them never heard of Mayo Clinic. Brand awareness means how many people have heard of Mayo Clinic? Just 25, they found out from the focus group. A telephone interview, they found out of that, 15% of them, they might have heard the name Mayo Clinic, but they don't think it's much benefit to them on their policy. They didn't buy their policy because they're planning to go to the Mayo Clinic. Right? Maybe they bought their policy, they might be planning to go to a hospital near their own country. Maybe they're from Thailand and they want to go to a Korean hospital or Japanese hospital. Right? Closer to home. So, if you're working for Mayo Clinic, you want them to go to the Mayo Clinic, not to the German hospital if they're European, or to another type of hospital. You can find that usually the wealthy or high level people are very fussy about doctors. They always ask each other about who's a good doctor. Right? It's quite smart in a way because some doctors have different abilities. So they try hard to find the best doctors so they can get some best treatment. Right? It makes a difference which doctor gives you a treatment or where you get your treatment. Yes. That's why people choose the international health insurance. So if we are going to get international customers, probably they're coming to us because of this reason. Right? So will be served in their own so, you know, after finding this out, Mayo Clinic wants to do some more research, right? They think they need to do more research. So that's your job. You're working in marketing for Mayo Clinic, and you have to decide what research are you going to do. What kind of research or where? Could be the same, they already did face to face interviews, telephone interviews, patient survey. So decide what type what type and what do you want to find out? What kind of thing do you want to find out? So I'll just take another two or three minutes and then we'll discuss together as a class. Discuss with your partner.
But we can think about just generally what method should we use. Do we need any secondary data? If we're getting primary data, where or how are we going to ask find the primary data? What are we going to try to find out?
So again, you want to increase people's brand awareness of Mayo Clinic. So even if they have, they might already have health insurance, right? If they're in the first class in the airplane, they might have international health insurance. But with their international health insurance, they can choose from a number of hospitals, right? So you want them to be more aware of the brand. You guys didn't know that Mayo Clinic was the top hospital in the US, right? So make people more aware of that fact. Okay? Yes? First, we can summarize the information about uh, the patients we already have mm -hmm. and uh, find out uh, to, uh, their distribution, their habits, their hobbies, and uh, uh, to, ex uh, to expand their uh, relative, uh, uh, use their relations relationships to expand um, or we can find the other uh, straightens. So the word about you want to use the relationships of our current customers, right? Yes. So this is our method of increasing our customers. Anybody else have another idea for increasing our customers before we talk about the research that we need to do to improve that? Yes? Yeah. It it was said that this clinic is for very wealthy patients and some famous ones. So maybe they can use uh, in the advertising. They they can use the real cases that will help the Nigerian president to get a healthy and something like this. So people will know that the healthy that the okay. famous people actually were helped by this. Okay. So that's part of the advertising is okay. use the famous uh, when we're doing the advertising. Yeah. Use the famous case of the famous person. We have to get their permission first, right? Pay them some money that they we can talk about their health problem. Right? Uh, okay, so do we need to collect any secondary data then towards this aim? Do we need to collect any secondary data, do you think? Some data that's already out there. What kind of secondary data do we need to get? Names of the doctors. Oh, doctors, list of doctors, any other secondary data? Uh, the airlines who have their first class. Right, airlines. Also, to make a research for which countries are the most patient, except for the US. Okay, so where are, are people have health insurance? Yes. Where do you think people would have a lot of international health insurance? Just where do you think? Hmm? Do they need international health insurance if they live in the US? I would say army countries in India, where there are a lot of people. Yes, countries where there are you have, like in South America, it's quite unequal. You can have 20% very wealthy people living in Ecuador, for example. They have a lot of oil. 80% people are quite poor. So the clinic in Ecuador might not be that good. So they are going to want international health insurance, right? So we can find, you'll probably find out South America, Africa, Middle East, countries where they don't have great service, right? That they probably have more people with international health insurance. Do you think you need international health insurance living in Korea? Or you're happy with the Korean hospitals? You're happy with the Korean hospitals? Right? In Ireland, some people go, in Ireland, they, some people want to go to the US for treatment. Right? Because they think the US is, uh, has some better treatment, especially in some areas, right? If they have some serious problems. So some health people in Ireland, not many, but some will have international health insurance, right? Uh, so then what about the primary data? How are we going to collect primary data and what are we going to try and find out? Who are we going to talk to? Where are we going? What are we going to do? Maybe a number of people who, uh, whose income is above a certain amount. Hmm? Just randomly? 
mm, in uh, in chosen countries. So just if we choose the country and then just randomly contact people with a very high. No, no, I mean, I mean to find a list with like uh, how many people uh, have income above that much. So in secondary data, income. Oh, yeah. Hospital records. Hospital records. Hospital records are not public information. Yeah. Well, yes. Interviews with doctors if they're interested or if they recommend this clinic. So one-to-one -one interview or focus group or telephone interview? Um, You're in the US. I think telephone interview is the best. Okay. For just contacting them and when they're interested, once they're interested, then they we can send an agent to talk to them more about this problem. Telephone interview with doctors. What are you going to ask them? Mm, hello, I'm in my clinic. Would you, would you oh. What information? What is it going to be your key question? Uh, my key question, if they, if they would recommend my clinic to their customers. Okay. And then I would explain about the clinic, of course, because maybe some of them don't know the clinic. Okay. Do they know? Most of them, doctors should know. They're interested um, in cooperation with my clinic. Okay, would they recommend this? And they yeah, cooperation. So yeah, cooperate. Win to win, win win situation. Okay. So, any other idea for our primary data? Any other action point? With banks. So, this is back up here as a method of increasing your customers. What do you mean? Because banks know that who is the who are the rich. Mm -hmm. They uh, save their money in the bank. Yes. For example, international bank, Swiss or Switzerland mm -hmm. or other countries. Yes. So, mm -hmm. I have to get information from them. Can the bank give you information about its customers? Mm -hmm. So they won't be able to give us any information because they are not allowed to do that right? about their customers. Marketing in the banks, right? Marketing, yes. Also, they can do collaboration with local hospitals. Yes. So, with the doctors and the hospitals, we can also have hospital managers, hospital directors, okay, management staff in the hospital. Any other primary data? I think you can get.